Welcome to Immigration Quick Take. This is Ellie Rutledge Silver with the American Immigration Lawyers Association. Yesterday, President Trump announced executive actions to strengthen border and interior enforcement. Here to share details of the executive orders is ALIS Director of Advocacy, Greg Chen. Greg, thanks for joining me. Tell me more about the border enforcement announcements. If there was any doubt that President Trump would follow through on the kind of campaign rhetoric he engaged in months ago that was highly anti-immigrant and called for aggressive building of a wall and targeting of immigrant communities, let those wonders be dispelled now. The orders that the president signed specifically will call for completing a border wall, a physical wall, uh, to be constructed. Now, some of that is going to be symbolic calls right now because he doesn't have the money to really complete such a wall, uh, but it's an indication that he plans to carry through with that plan. The other major component uh, of the impact on the border is going to be what he will do with those who are arriving at our southern borders in particular. And here we are talking about asylum seekers fleeing persecution, families and children, as well as other immigrants. And significantly, he is calling for massive increase of detention of people coming to our southern borders and entering. That detention is going to almost certainly compromise, if not violate, violate principles of due process in the Constitution. Uh, it will also result in turning back people that are in need of humanitarian aid and asylum here in the United States. To have such a uh, change in policy where CBP is likely to be pushing asylum seekers back is certain to violate our basic commitment to protecting those who are coming to the United States. One of the principles that the United States has long stood for in terms of making sure our borders, that our country is welcoming of those in need of aid. What about interior enforcement? In the interior, Trump's announcement essentially amounts to a declaration of open season against immigrant communities, and in particular, those who do not have legal status to be here. First, with respect to actions of the federal government, it will triple the number of ICE officers and agents engaged in operations in the interior. This will radically increase the number of raids and interior enforcement actions. The most problematic aspect here, though, is that the Trump order will almost eliminate any sense of real prioritization of who will be targeted for these kinds of enforcement actions. Though he has said publicly that he is going to go after those who are criminals and who would pose threats to our country, the fact is that his list of priorities doesn't even require people to be convicted or even charged with a crime. It, can sim it includes people who have simply committed behaviors that are suspected of possibly being in violation of a crime. That's a very broad uh, set of priorities, and it will result in families, in longtime residents of the United, in the United States, even dreamers to be targeted. The other major component that we are concerned about on the interior is aspects relating to the involvement of states and localities and their law enforcement. What Trump's order will do is put incredible pressure on the loca local governments to engage in federal immigration enforcement. And it does so without creating and ensuring the kind of protections against abuses by local law enforcement that may violate the Constitution or federal laws. Just remember what Sheriff Joe Arpaio did in Arizona. Any kind of check on that is pretty much going to be eliminated. And in fact, there's going to be pressure on local governments to engage in that kind of federal immigration enforcement moving forward. So overall, we are looking at the most aggressive enforcement campaign against immigrant communities that's going to really frighten and terrorize those communities. It's going to be happening on the border and in the interior, and AILA is going to be taking a furious stand to make sure that people's rights are protected. More executive orders are planned. What should we expect? We also expect Trump to sign orders soon that will, one, ban refugees from coming to the United States for a period of 120 days. And that's essentially going to shut down the U.S. Refugee Resettlement Program until further review of the program can be done. That's the entire U.S. humanitarian refugee program. We are a humanitarian leader, and he's going to push the substantial pause button on it, and it will really hurt U.S. efforts to protect those that are in humanitarian need. 
In particular, he will ban Syrian refugees entirely uh, and going forward indefinitely without any temporary limit to that ban. With respect to the other aspects of what we expect coming is a ban for 30 days on any national coming from set one of seven countries, Syria, Sudan, Iraq, and Iran, Libya, Somalia, and Yemen. And essentially, for a 30-day period, anybody coming into the country in search of a visa who is coming for whatever reason, business purpose, education, to visit family, on a temporary or on an immigrant basis, is going to be barred. There are some very narrow exceptions, uh, but that is going to really shut down uh, all sorts of operations, all sorts of visits from those countries, uh, and it's going to affect businesses, it's going to affect our families. The last general category of what we expect tomorrow is going to be added restrictions for screening processes for people entering the country for all different reasons uh, on immigration basis, uh, without regard to what country you're coming from. In particular, we are looking at an increase in the requirement for people to engage and go in for in-person interviews at consulates. Uh, it appears that that will apply across the board uh, and will be a change to the visa interview waiver program. If that happens, I think we all understand how significant of a backlog it will create, um, how much it will clog the uh, Department of State consulate offices, and how much it will slow down immigrants trying to come to the United States across the board. Already, AILA has a wealth of information up on its website at the Featured Issue page for Immigration 2017 that analyzes the various executive orders that are coming uh, and those that have already been signed. We hope you'll go look at that. We also have action alerts that are now up on our website asking members to take action uh, to make sure we hold the Trump administration accountable for what it is going to be doing in the space of immigration and refugees. And lastly, we really ask all AILA members to engage in whatever way you can now to make sure that this administration, whatever it does, that we can protect our clients, we can protect immigrants and refugees all across the country and those even who are seeking protection trying to come in. Thanks, Greg, for joining me. For the rest of you, please stay tuned for more updates from the American Immigration Lawyers Association.